Now that we're acquainted with the Robot Mesh Studio interface, it's time to get our hands dirty and get down to work. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be building a very simple mimic um, using a couple of VEX IQ elements. You'll recall that all a mimic is is it's a simulation. So we're going to take a look at the simulation ability of Robot Mesh Studio using a very simple project. Uh, to do that though, I'm going to need to give myself a little bit more room to work with. So let's unpin this tab temporarily just to maximize my screen. I'll click back here on the Mimics tab here. So now I have a lot more space to work with. And I might also come down here to the Program Status area and close this as well. And by clicking on the hotspot, it goes away. Um, other things I want to do. I would like to get rid of this uh, VEX IQ field. Um, it's a pretty good field, but it's a little too big for what I want. So I'm going to give this a click. And I can either press the Delete key or I can come up here and click on the trash icon and it magically goes away. Here in the miscellaneous library, which is the second from the bottom, what I want instead in its place is to use a base tile. So let's give this base tile a click and you can see it just goes into the middle of the mimic. Using my middle mouse scroll wheel I can zoom in so I can get a little bit closer. And a curious thing happens. We can see that the snap points in the base tile light up like a Christmas tree. So here I have these orange cylinders and I can click on them and start placing uh, elements uh, into these snap points. To deselect the base tile, if I want to get out of here, I just click on the black empty space around it by left clicking and it goes away. And you can see that when I did that, the snap points also vanished. So to start with, let's click on the center snap point here and let's add some pieces. I'm going to come up here to my library and go to, let's, what do I want to add here? Let's add a corner connector. So I'll choose that. And the corner connector I want to use is this 2x wide. So I have uh, two wide, two high, and there's a center hole. I'm just going to left click to add it. And when I do so, it puts it in the center of the base plate which is not so great. So to change the positioning here, I can come up to the tools and we're going to see a couple of tools here. I have a rotation tool, which will allow me to rotate the element in three dimensional space. So if I click on this, I could say, pull this up. Now it's underneath the plate. So I could use the translation tool, which will allow me to adjust the position in 3D space of the corner connector. You can see that what has happened is I now get a set of arrows, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z. I'm going to click on this arrow here and push this up. And because these two tools are used so often, um, one great and very convenient shortcut that has been added is the combination of translation and rotation, which will give me one gizmo that does it all. So let's give that a click. And you can see that now I can either rotate the geometry in three dimensions, oops, or I can use the translation arrows. So, um, and this is certainly preferable to having to switch between two different tools. Now, one thing that using translation and rotation allows us to do is it allows us to do things um, that don't make a whole lot of sense in real life. For example, putting this corner connector in the middle of the base plate. So. My preferred tool, and the one that you're going to come to know and love, is the Auto Tool. And what the Auto Tool does is if I give this a click and choose a connection point here on the corner connector, the Auto Tool will automatically snap to the holes in the field. What it won't do is it won't let me place the uh, corner connector in the spaces between the holes. So if I keep moving my mouse, all that will happen is the Auto Tool will move to the next available snap point. So let's put this here in the center of my um, base plate. I'll left click and maybe what I want to do is it looks like one of my um, pegs is in the hole. So let's put the other peg in the hole using auto. And perhaps it's the case that I need to give this a rotate. So let's rotate this a little. Perfect. That looks a lot better. Next, let's add some connector pins. What I want to do here is I want to build a larger assembly that's going to come up. It's going to have a smart motor, a shaft, and it's going to turn some gears. So let's go here into my library and take a look at my corner connector pins. Again, with auto selected, now if I grab the one by one corner connector, 
it's going to snap nicely into the holes in my corner connector. So I have two connector pins. Um, an interesting thing that happens is that in some cases, uh, for example, with shafts, with, with uh, connector pins, we can increase or decrease the size of the pins. And the way we can do that is by clicking on the pin. You can see I get a little plus um, uh, symbol here. That allows me to choose a longer pin, make this longer. Again, I can also make it shorter as well. So if I click on the little minus icon, it will allow me to make it shorter and shorter until it can be no shorter, which in this case, one by one is as small as these pins get. Uh, all that does is it just saves me from having to go down here and grab uh, and grabbing the longer pins. So I have two corner connector pins. Let's go up here and take a look at my 2x beams. And what I want to do here is grab a 2x12 beam, again with auto selected. You can see that auto is selected. Let's go and grab a 2x12 beam. And we can see that it snaps now to the connector pins. What I will likely want to do is I want to have this beam um, mounted vertically as opposed to horizontally. So let's click on the snap point for the beam. So here I have a connection point and I have a little uh, gizmo or widget that's going to allow me to rotate this geometry so that it's standing upright. We can see that that's the case. Uh, next order of business is I'm going to want to add um, a smart motor. And if I come up here and take a look at my devices here, we will see the VEX IQ smart motor as well as some of the sensors that are available for us to work with when using the IQ robot. I am going to choose a smart motor. Again, it's going to place it in the middle of the Mimic, which is perhaps not such a great place for it. Um, and so what I might do here is using my translation and rotation tools, I can pull this up. And what we need to do here is we need to find a way of mounting the smart motor to this 2x12 beam. Uh, if the motor is not mounted to the beam, um, it's going to fall when we run the simulation. So right now, if I test this out uh, by uh, running the physics engine by clicking connect, what we should see is that this motor is going to fall because there's nothing holding it uh, up to the beam. So here we can see it just drops to the ground. Again, if I disconnect, I can run the simulation again by hitting connect. And again, it falls. So let's add some pegs so that that doesn't happen. Um, I'm going to click here on my connector pins. Again, with auto selected, let's throw some pins here at the top of my 2x12 beam. Okay. And now perhaps what we want to do is grab one of the holes here. So for example, this connection point, and let's put it so that my motor is snapping to the pegs. That's not such a great place for it. So I'm going to rotate the positioning of the motor. And again, let's take a look at what's available here. So let's take this hole here, use auto, and snap it to one of the pegs. And again, what we might do is rotate this so that this is standing upright. Okay, so let's grab this. Much better. Okay, next problem we're going to have to contend with is I really have no way of seeing where the shaft opening is on the motor. So to do that, I can uh, click on this 2x12 beam and I can hide it which is that I'm going to temporarily render the 2x12 beam invisible. This doesn't delete uh, the model element, it just removes it from my view temporarily. So if I click on the 2x12 beam and come up here to this icon, the hide icon, which is control H, or sorry, the H key shortcut, my um, 2x12 beam is hidden. And what I can do is now I can see the opening for me uh, to place this shaft. So I'm going to go down here and look for my shafts, collars, and washers. And I'm going to grab a 4x pitch shaft. And let's put this here in. And again, there's a number of snap points along the shaft. So I can just click this and insert it either further, really far, or pull it out completely. And what I want to do is I want to have this in far enough that when I run the simulation by hitting connect, I run the mimic, that it doesn't fall. 
and that's the case that with my Mimic running, uh, it looks like it's secure. So let's disconnect. And what I want to have happen is I want this shaft to turn a 12 tooth gear. So let's go up to our um, gears icon here and choose the 12 tooth gear. And you can see with auto uh, selected, that is nice and easy. I will also come down here and add a second shaft because uh, we're going to want this 12 tooth um, gear to turn a larger 36 tooth gear. So let's come up here to shafts, collars, and washers, grab another 4x shaft, maybe we'll place it there, and we'll just run it through the hole here. And now if I come up to, let's find our gears, I have a number of larger gears I can choose from. Let's use auto, auto selected, and grab this 36 tooth gear. Marvelous, that's going to fit like a glove. Perfect. And again, if I click in the dark space behind, deselects. Okay, so uh, we have now a uh, motor connected to a 2x12 beam and uh, these two gears connected. Our next step here is to actually run the simulation and see if this falls apart. So let's hit connect. So far, so good. Now, beside the motor here, so V, so if I disconnect here, V is not such a good name for motor. Let's call this main motor. So now I have a main motor. Um, and I can also come up here and run the simulation and using the device monitor here, I can make the motor spin the um, 12 tooth gear. So let's just make this go slow enough that we can see what's happening. So here I have my 12 tooth uh, uh, gear attached to my shaft. So this is being driven by my motor and it's turning this 36 tooth gear. And again, whether it spins clockwise or counterclockwise, I change that here just by uh, using the slider. And if the slider is in the middle, nothing happens, the motor's in neutral. But again, I can move it to the left, I can move it to the right. So this is right, it's gonna turn one way. So let's see which direction it's turning in. It looks like that's moving really fast, it's hard to see. So it looks like my gear here is turning clockwise. And now if I move it the other way, it's gonna start turning counterclockwise. And there you have it. Our first very, very simple mimic.